The first airbrush that I made a video review on for this channel is the one that we're going to be taking a second look at today. And that's the Iwata Custom Micron Takumi, one of my favorite detail airbrushes ever made. I purchased this airbrush two and a half years ago to replace one of my older Microns. So this video is going to be kind of like a long term review. A high end airbrush like this is designed to last your lifetime. So two and a half years is not that long. I put thousands of hours into this airbrush, painted many pictures with it and it still looks basically brand new. So let's start this one a little bit differently by taking a look at that finish under the macro lens. You can see that the chrome finish is flawless and this is as good as it gets. Even with all those hours put into it, it still looks like the day that I bought it. When you buy this one, this airbrush does come with a five year warranty. And at this point, I'm pretty confident that I'm not gonna have to use it. When I'm painting, I always make sure to clean out any paint, not allowing any of it to dry within the cup or around the nozzle. But something that I don't do is over clean my airbrush. I only took apart the rear assembly one time to clean it out with some mild soap, which I made a video on a few weeks ago, and that was after two years. As long as you clean out the paint after a painting session and run some reducer, cleaner, or distilled water through it, there's actually very little maintenance needed for this airbrush. The only part that I needed to replace was the needle and the reason was entirely on me. One time I accidentally bumped it into a panel that I was painting. Not a big deal. The nozzle was unharmed and a new needle is like 20 bucks. And again, two and a half years isn't that long, but I don't baby my airbrushes. I paint with them constantly and this one held up perfectly. In my hand, you'll notice that this is kind of a small airbrush. The trigger is a lot closer to the nozzle than you'll see on other airbrushes. And the point of this is just to feel like you're closer to whatever it is you're painting. With an airbrush, one of the ways that you achieve detail is by holding the airbrush very close to the surface that you're working on. And with this position of the trigger, you really feel like you're right on top of your artwork. It's almost like holding a pencil where you're choked up all the way on it. The Micron Takumi comes with this very interesting trigger, and it's actually one of my favorites that I've ever used. It's basically a square shape with some rounded edges and it has some pretty deep notches cut into it. With my grip, my trigger finger feels locked in there. It never feels like it's slipping. When you paint with an airbrush for many hours each day, a comfortable trigger is so very important. So in my opinion, I think that they nailed the design of this trigger and the height of it is absolutely perfect. Now the Iwata Custom Micron is of course a detail airbrush. So this Takumi model comes with a 0.18 millimeter needle and nozzle. But that small nozzle isn't the only reason a Micron sprays like this because there's plenty of airbrushes out there with small nozzles and they don't spray like Microns. What separates a Micron from other detail airbrushes is the design of this three-part head system. It sprays a very, very tight cone shape, so you could paint detail without having to be right on top of your artwork like most other airbrushes. And because of that, you could back up a bit and still pull off small blends and gradients, and you just have so much control with this airbrush. Even spraying at normal PSIs like 20 or 25 PSI, this airbrush is going to give you a lower airspeed and a lower volume of paint, which makes painting detail easier. The Micron Takumi comes with a cutaway rear handle, which in my opinion is much more for aesthetics than actual purpose. But you can use this feature to fully retract the needle to quickly flush out the paint cup. The handle also includes a needle limiter on the back if you'd like to preset your trigger pull distance. This is a very cool little feature. There's a small cap on the back, which is spring loaded. And when you're not using the needle protector crown cap, you could screw it on the back here so you don't lose it. I probably should have used this feature because I already misplaced my crown cap. It's probably around somewhere, but the one I have on here is one from a different airbrush, but it fits just the same. I like small features like this in an airbrush. I think it just makes it a little bit more interesting to work with and to use, but I do think this design came from Grex airbrushes. I'm not 100% sure on that, but I know that one of their older models had one that was uh, magnetic and you could place the cap on the back. Either way, it's a cool feature and I definitely appreciate it. When you purchase this airbrush, it comes packaged in a cardboard box and inside here you have the spray out test of your particular airbrush and you also get this very nice large microfiber cloth with the Iwata logo on it. And the airbrush is packaged in this very nice heavy duty box. This thing feels very well made. Besides the airbrush, you get one of these small spanner wrenches to remove the nozzle if you need to. You also get some Iwata lube and one of the Iwata pistol grip moisture filters. 
So you do get a few extra accessories with this airbrush, which is nice to see. This of course is a side feed airbrush, so you're going to get a little bit more room for your trigger finger. Depending on how you paint, you may also get a better line of sight because the cup isn't blocking your view. But when I'm painting with an airbrush, I've learned to look down the side of it rather than looking over the top. That's just my preference. So I'm happy with either a side feed or a gravity fed cup. There's two reasons why I really like this side feed, and the first is the position of the trigger. Because that cup isn't on top, they were able to move the trigger much closer to the nozzle, which is a design that I really love, and I've just got so comfortable with using it over the last two years. And the other reason is actually pretty simple. It just makes it a lot easier for me to clean. This cup fits into the airbrush through compression, it's just basically friction holding it in there. There's no sort of screws or threads. And at the end of a painting session, I just like to remove this cup and just kind of flush everything out with some cleaner or some distilled water. And even though this is a side feed airbrush, it's gravity assisted. And what that means is that the paint is fed into the airbrush through the bottom of the cup. It doesn't have to siphon it up like the old design. And what I like about that is that it's quicker to prime the airbrush and you could use the smallest amount. You could even put in a half a drop of paint and this thing is going to spray. So even though the cup is on the side of the airbrush, it performs just like one with a cup on the top. And just like all my other airbrush reviews, I like to cover the things that I like and the things that I don't. So far, I've talked about every Everything that I like about this airbrush because there's a lot to love and to me it's pretty much perfect but there are a few things that I would have liked to have seen better. The first is the cup that you get with the airbrush. This thing is just way too big. Now I do love the option to be able to use a larger cup because that could be very helpful. But because this airbrush is the Micron Takumi, an airbrush that's designed for extreme detail, I don't use that much paint and I know most others don't either. Most of the other people that I spoke to that also own this airbrush have done the same thing that I've done and just switched out the cup for a smaller one. This is the water tower of a cup that comes with the airbrush when you buy it, which is very large at 7 milliliters. But what I've done is swapped it out to a 3 mil cup, and this one is from a Harder and Steamek Infinity. You can even see that it's nickel plated rather than chrome. The smaller cup from the Neo for Iwata also fits this. So I do absolutely love that you can unscrew these cups and swap them out for different sizes, but I wish they included both within the box because this is a very expensive airbrush. It would have been a very nice thing to see them include both the 7mm and the 3mm cup instead of having to buy an extra cup which is like 30 or 40 US dollars. Another thing that I would have absolutely loved is to have a lefty or a righty option instead of the current design. This airbrush is designed to spray with a cup either on the left or the right side of it. There's a small plug that you can remove from the airbrush and then switch the cup to either side that you like. So if you're a lefty, you could place the cup on the left side of the airbrush and then insert the plug on the right side. Now I paint with my right hand, so the cup is going to be on the right side of my airbrush and it's always going to be there. I'm never going to need the option to switch it over to the left side unless I need to sell it, which I'm not going to do. So I would have much preferred to purchase a model that had a removable cup that only fits the right side and didn't have this plug constantly sticking out of the left side of the airbrush. I know that some have said that this option makes it easier to clean out the airbrush because you could spray some cleaner through either side. But in my experience, this hasn't been the case for me. I found this plug actually collects a very small amount of paint over time and needs to be cleaned out periodically. And this airbrush is of course called a custom Micron, so it would have been really nice to have some more customization options for it. I think it would have been so awesome if you could either have purchased a lefty or a righty version, and the opposite side where this plug is, is completely flush. But besides those things, I love pretty much everything about this airbrush. It's really one of my favorite detail brushes that I've ever used, and definitely the best that I've ever owned. But I really, really wish that the price was a little bit lower just to make this airbrush more accessible to more people. Right now, the list price for this model is 657 US dollars, and that's a lot of money. Fortunately, you can purchase this airbrush at a lower price from their authorized dealers. And just like every single airbrush that I reviewed on this channel, I did purchase this one with my own money. I purchased it from a company called Coast Airbrush in California, and I paid just around $500 for it. A little less, I think around $490. And of course, I don't have any connection with that company, I'm just a customer. But I did notice on Iwata's website that they do list that company as their platinum dealer. And at the time of this video, they're selling it for like $460. I went around to all the other dealers just to find the best price. That's the best one right now. But again, even at $460, $470, I think this is still a very expensive airbrush, and I just wish the price was a little bit lower. 
But even with that said, if I lost this airbrush, I'd have to buy another one. I just, I like it too much. So that's the things that I love about the airbrush and a few of the things that I'm not so crazy about. And from here, let's move along to the most important part. And that's the way this airbrush sprays, which to me is also its best quality. This is without question one of the most precise and accurate airbrushes that I've ever used. The trigger response rate on the Micron Takumi is absolutely incredible. It's perfect. If you look at my trigger finger, you'll see that I'm not really pulling back on the trigger. It's more like applying a bit of pressure to it. That small amount of pressure just pulls that trigger back the smallest amount which retracts the needle and gives me an instantaneous paint response. And I always refer to this as the trigger response rate, but there's a lot more going on than just the way the trigger is designed. It also has a lot to do with the needle and the nozzle design. And I know that this head system goes back to Olympus airbrushes before Iwata took over. And in my opinion, when it comes to detail airbrushes, this head design is the best out there. It really is the most accurate and the most instantaneous response rate. Writing out letters like this in print is surprisingly difficult to do, and it really tests the response rate and accuracy of the trigger. Zero issues with this. It did a perfect job. It really feels like you're almost drawing with a pencil. In freehand painting thin lines, you could do this with pretty much any airbrush, but this one makes it a little bit easier just because of that lower volume of paint, and I can paint the line with just as thin as a human hair, if not a bit thinner. The low airspeed from this airbrush also makes it feel very comfortable to paint with. So when I'm spraying at a normal PSI, right around 20 or so, I don't feel a lot of turbulence blowing off the artwork as I'm painting. So here's a look at the next painting tutorial that we'll be doing on this channel, starting in about a week or two. This is from a few weeks back when I was working on the forehead and cleaning up some areas, but for like 90% of this portrait I was using my other Micron, which is my CMB. And I love that airbrush, it's one of my favorites, it sprays just like the Takumi. But toward the end of this painting I switched back over to the Micron Takumi just to see how it compared against the CMB. And that's what I'm doing here as I'm painting some of the wrinkles just to the left of the ear. And this airbrush was spraying amazing. I just, I love that there's no guessing with it. It's always spraying consistently and it's spraying at the same point. But I will say that because it's a detail airbrush with a small nozzle spraying at a pretty low airspeed, you really should be using a nice high quality paint for this. Something like Golden High Flow Acrylics or Createx Colors, the Wicked or the Illustration Line. Some type of paint where the binder and the pigments are sheared and milled to very small sizes because that's important for a good detail airbrush. An airbrush is very important and it's nice to own a good airbrush, but to me, this is my opinion, the paint is more important than the airbrush. So if you have a high quality paint, like I'm using Createx Illustration Colors here, with a high end airbrush, it's really a match made in heaven. And to be honest, there's not much more I could say about the Micron Takumi. It's just one of my favorite detail brushes ever made. And if you look back through any of my videos, any of those paintings or painting tutorials, you'll see that I'm most likely using this airbrush because it just feels so comfortable to me. So to wrap up this video, let's just do a quick airbrush breakdown so you can see the internal parts. After removing the rear handle, you can loosen up the chucking nut and then retract the needle from the airbrush. Here you're going to see this screw. This is called the needle spring adjuster. And just like what the name sounds like, you could adjust the spring tension by how far down you tighten this. You could set this any way you like, but this spring inside the airbrush is not just for comfort, it has a very important job. That spring tension is what forms a seal between the end of the needle and the nozzle. I personally prefer more tension on the airbrush trigger, so I keep this screw screwed down pretty much all the way. Again, you could set this any way you like, but the way you're seeing it right now is the way that I always have it set. So from here, I can unscrew this large part. This is called the spring guide, which acts as the housing for the entire rear spring assembly. And when I unscrew that, the spring assembly comes right out of the back of the airbrush. From here, I'm unscrewing that needle spring adjuster, and inside here, you're going to see the needle spring itself. This spring is over this long part, which is called the needle chucking guide, and at the front of it, you'll see that trigger lever. And that's it for the rear assembly. It just consists of these four parts. Very, very easy to break down. To reassemble this, the first thing I'm doing is taking that needle chucking guide, and then taking the needle spring, placing it right over the back. Here, I can take that housing, which is called the spring guide, place it right over the top, and then I could take that needle adjustment screw and screw it within the back. And again, you don't have to tighten this down all the way like I do. That's just my preference. And then that's it for the back of the airbrush. The next part is the trigger itself. It's important to understand that the needle slides through the center of this trigger. So in order to lift this trigger out of the airbrush, the needle needs to be fully removed. You want to just slightly rotate it and then lift it right out of the top of the airbrush. And this is what the trigger looks like. There's kind of like this small bar, these two prongs at the bottom of it. 
just so it rocks easily back and forth. Just underneath the trigger inside here, there's a very small valve piston. I'm not going to remove this part because there's no need to, but just understand that it's in there, so make sure you don't lose it. Now the Micron head system is custom match and properly installed on your airbrush, so there's no need to remove it. But for the sake of this video, I'm going to unscrew it just to show you what it looks like. And this is what the head system looks like. All I needed to do was unscrew it, and I needed a pair of soft drop pliers just to give myself some grip. Unfortunately, I noticed that occasionally the threads here tend to leak a very small amount of air. So what I'm doing here is using some beeswax, a very small amount, just placing it on the threads and lightly pulling back. A little bit here is going to go a long way. It's surprising how well beeswax works. Just a little bit on those threads, and then once you screw it in, that's going to kind of even everything out and form a better seal. So that's going to be it for this review. Two and a half years later, the airbrush sprays like it's brand new. And I fully expect this airbrush to continue spraying well for the next 20 to 30 years, maybe even more. Who knows? So awesome airbrush all around. Without question, my favorite detail airbrush, and one I'd fully recommend. Thank you for watching everybody. If anyone's considering this airbrush, I do hope that this video helped you out. Have a great week and I'll see you back here next Friday.